So good morning, everyone. My name is Katie Hawley, and I am the chair of the board of directors here at the Y. Um, on behalf of the board and staff, allow me to extend a warm welcome and thank you. Thank you very much for joining us for our 158th annual meeting of the Greater Burlington YMCA. Yeah. No young chickens. Together we represent a cross section of members, program families, staff, board, donors, partners, and supporters. Each of us has our own unique connection to the Y, and together we make up the broad, inclusive group that for 158 years has connected this cornerstone institution to the community at large. In addition to welcoming all of you, I have the great pleasure to extend our deepest appreciation to North Country Federal Credit Union. While North Country is our event sponsor today, they are so much more. Over the past 12 years, and with generous support of more than 1.1 million, North Country has stood by our side as the WISE community partner for youth development. Thank you to North Country. Our theme today for today's meeting is the power of community. The involvement of each of you and the support of North Country and all our donors helps us realize that power. Today you will hear from speakers who are deeply connected to our why and who exemplify how community plays out in all that we do. Before we dive into the balance of our program and those why stories, I am pleased to introduce our first speaker, Mayor Emma Mulvaney Stanick. I know the mayor's family is part of the Y, and we are proud to say that she joins a long line of Burlington mayors who have come to the Y throughout our history. Just months into her tenure, she is deep into her work, work that I know requires her head out by nine, so we are deeply appreciative that she could join us this morning to offer a few words of her own about community. Without further delay, please welcome Mayor Mulvaney Stuck. This is a uh, well-known part about my job is how to use these little little linear right. thing at all times and all microphones. All right, how's that sound? Okay, good. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's so nice to see such a packed room uh, celebrating the why, and and usually annual meetings can be a little dry. So this is really great. I love a good theme. I love a good you know start to a Friday morning and just seeing so many bright and shiny faces uh, really celebrating and recognizing the hard work of an organization that has been able to last 158 years. I uh, really want to honor that. Um, the theme of the power of community is such a good one. As Katie mentioned, uh, my family has been members since I had kids, frankly, uh, because it is such a vital component of our community. So many children, so many generations, really, of Burlingtonians have gone through this organization. And the most beautiful part, having lived here for almost 20 years now, is to see the, even the evolution, especially in the last 20 years of this organization. The real understanding and deeper, deeper commitment to equity, deeper commitment to how our city continues to diversify and evolve, and really being able to kind of rise to the occasion of continuing to show up for community. Um, my kids learn to swim here. Um, it's just really, and also thank you so much for having open gym in the middle of the winter. Oh my goodness, if you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. It's a little chaotic, but if you put on a baseball helmet, you should be able to survive. It's totally <laughs> fine. Um, but it's really, but what it really shows is this opportunity to really, again, show up for community, for the physical and emotional needs of our community, but also just a place of inclusion, a place where you can come and you can really um, be both in, in spirit, mind, body, have a place to really uh, belong and to uh, take care of yourself. So I'm, I'm just so proud to be here with all of you. Um, I'm glad that the alignment of the city's history is aligned with, I didn't know that, the history of the why, because of course Burlington was founded 159 years ago, which the only reason that's burned in my brain is as the first woman mayor, uh, it's been 159 years since, uh, since we have not had a woman mayor. Um, details, details. Uh, but I'm just, again, <laughs> thank you. It is big, it is important, right? 
Um, but anyway, here to celebrate with all of you. I look forward to continuing to have a very robust and healthy relationship with the city, making sure we continue to partner on what your needs are with your community and your members, but just really thinking, again, always pushing to innovate and to evolve and continue to show up as Burlington continues to grow, diversify, um, and change, frankly, and just in all the needs of the people and place that we live in. So thank you so much for having me here this morning, and uh, I look forward to having a great event. like I wore the wrong shirt for this <laughs> microphone today. So thank you, Mayor, for helping us kick off our meeting and setting, setting the tone for the power of community. The one thing that I hear in your remarks is the importance of uh, diversity and inclusion. And I have to say that when we open this building, um, I'm looking for Vicki. I was a tour partner with Vicki, and we did a bunch of tours, and my favorite part of the tour was stopping um, and pointing to the elevator and talking about the importance of the elevator and how the elevator was um, symbolic of a more inclusive physical building, which allowed access in a different way uh, than the old building did. So um, every time I hear the word inclusion about the why, I have this image in my head of an elevator that's really uh, helping to bring that to life in different ways. So thank you for that. Before we continue with our program, we have some annual board business. This would be the drier part of the meeting. Um, and each year at our annual meeting, we approve a slate of board members. And this year we have two board members who will renew their commitment for another three year term and six who will be starting their first year of service on the board. I'm looking to renew for another term are Renee Bourget Place and Victoria Bennett. Uh, both have long roots with the YMCA. Renee started her connection with the Y as a kid and has served on the board for 15 years, including as a past term as a chair, um, currently serving on the role as treasurer and on the finance committee. Uh, Renee uh, is a person who always says yes, and we are deeply grateful for that. Victoria is a retired Y executive, having devoted 25 years to the Y movement in New Jersey, many of those years leading our year-round camp. Victoria has served on our strategic planning committee and currently serves on our nominating and governance committee. And Victoria's dedication to the Y is evident in all that she does and interactions that many of you have with her on a regular basis. We have six new board members who have been invited to join and we are seeking to formally approve them today. Bashir Abdallah, who you will be hearing from later in our program, is the Chief Products Officer for XOI Technologies. Uh, Jim Cohen, who is here um, and is a neighbor, is a financial advisor for J. Cohen Financial. Kevin Gallagher, who you heard from last year at the annual meeting, um, is a licensed clinical mental health counselor and co-founder of Optima. Brian Lowry, a financial advisor with Hickok and Boardman Capital Management. David Seaver, VP for Commercial Banking with Northfield Savings Bank. You can see we were bolstering our finance committee. And Catherine Simonson, who is our retired social work leader who most recently served as the Chief Client Services Officer at Howard Center. Each brings tremendous talent to the Y Board and will be a great asset to our work as uh, governance. We look forward to the coming year to continue our work to bring additional members onto the board as well. So approval of this slate of board members, the two returning and six new, is done with the approval of our voting members, which is our current board. If one of our current board members would please make a motion to approve this slate of six candidates. PJ, thank you. And a second from Robin, great. All members of the board who approve this slate of candidates, please indicate by saying so by saying aye. And those opposed, nay, the ayes have it. The slate is approved. Thank you. And thank you to each of my board colleagues for this commitment to our why through your service, a commitment to nurture the potential of youth, promote healthy living, and fostering a sense of social responsibility. Our last bit of board business, and one that I do with a heavy heart, is to thank two board members heading off our board after a combined 15 years of service. Mike Walsh and Jamie Hines epitomize what any organization could hope for in commitment, dedication, and passion from a board member. During a historic period in our WISE history, as evidenced by our beautiful facility today, Jamie and Mike have provided both leadership and support leaving their mark on our mission to strengthen community. Uh, as an expression of our deep appreciation for all that you've done, Jamie, if you can step forward, and I don't think Mike's with us today, but Jamie, if you can come forward, that'd be great.
I have a gift to share on the wise behalf, on behalf of your board colleagues, and say thank you who, from all who have benefited from your great work. Thank, thank you, you, Jamie. So much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They have been tremendous colleagues to our efforts, so I'm, I'm delighted to recognize both Jamie and Mike today. Having now welcomed our new board members and shared our thanks for Mike and Jamie as we move forward to hearing about our wise good work and the outcomes and outputs that all of you create in our community, I invite the invaluable member of our health and wellness staff, Jill McEwen, to lead us in a mindfulness exercise that will help set the tone for the remainder of the meeting. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy first official full day of summer solstice, and thankfully a little bit cooler. <laughs> so I'm gonna invite everybody to come to a comfortable yet relaxed position, sitting up tall in your chair, and focusing on the connection you have with the chair and the floor. And I also invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you, or maybe just bring your eyes to a soft gaze, leaving the busyness of your morning behind you, quieting your mind, and receiving this moment with kindness, accepting what we have here and now, there's nowhere to go, nothing to do, but be in this present moment. Bring attention to your breath. Focus on the in-breath and the out-breath. Relaxing your jaw, maybe placing the tongue on the roof of your mouth, lengthening through the front and the back of the neck, rolling the shoulders back and down, opening your heart. having your arms rest gently on your lap or wherever feels comfortable. And notice your breath in your body. Maybe you feel your breath in your abdomen. Maybe in your chest. maybe in your nostrils. And as you breathe in, invite peacefulness and exhale any stress or anxiety, worry or concern. And if your mind begins to wander, gently bring it back to the present moment, knowing that it's very natural for the brain to be in a thinking mode. And when one breath ends, another breath begins. And on your next breath, take a moment to focus on something you're grateful for today. It could be simple or profound. Gratitude for a person or a pet, our beautiful city, our amazing YMCA. 
the incredible staff who are so passionate for what they do, the um, incredible community and stakeholders that the Y enjoys. Honor this with your mind and your heart. And just focus on your breath for the next 10 or so seconds, relaxing any areas of tightness, letting go of worry, And on your next inhale, I invite you to begin to bring awareness to your body by wiggling your fingers and your toes. And when you're ready, open your eyes and we'll end our session today with our loving kindness chant. So I'm gonna ask you to take a deep breath, stretch your arms oops, up. <laughs> happens when you stretch your arms. Inhale, rise. And then exhale, bring your hands to your heart center, pressing the back of your thumbs into your heart, rotating your heart towards your chin. And we'll inhale through our nose collectively as a community. And as you exhale, repeat after me. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be safe. And may, I be and may I be peaceful. Thank you all so much for coming today. May the light in me ignite the light in each of you. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. There you go. I hope you're nice and relaxed for your portion. Let me cook this. Yes. Don't let that fall. <laughs> I won't. So in my 42 years with the Y, I have never been told to speak up. Can everyone hear me okay without the microphone? Yes? Okay, great. I think I had a nice little nap there, Jill. That was lovely. <laughs> we certainly are off to a great start this morning. I'm Marsha Fereniars, Interim CEO of the Greater Burlington YMCA. Allow me to add to Katie's welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. I'd also like to thank the mayor for being with us. We look forward to working with her and continuing our long, close relationship with the city. This past week, I marked my 42nd year with the Y. <laughs> Doug, was that supposed to be 24? I think you inverted it, right. I have held more positions during that time than I can remember, seen and been a part of some remarkable change and growth, and each day I count my good fortune for having had this incredible opportunity. 42 years gives you perspective. And as I thought about today's meeting and my tenure at the Y, Shel Silverstein's wonderful book, The Giving Tree, kept coming to mind. It's a book with a few powerful themes, generosity perhaps chief among them. But as I think about the book, I also think of two things. First, how the tree had something to offer the boy at every age. And secondly, how the tree adapted and creatively gave of itself to meet the boy's needs. Like the tree that supported the boy throughout his life, our Y serves people of every age. From the infants cared for in our early child care programs to our members in their 90s and beyond, we offer programming and community. It's so joyful to watch the smiles come across the faces of members as they come into the building, look into the aquatic center, and see one of our early childcare classes in the pool, laughing, playing, and always learning. Teens participate in our Dynamo swim team, and it is so much more than swim. They stay healthy, enjoy the camaraderie of teammates, and receive mentorship from their coaches. <clears throat> I think about COVID, I try not to think of it a lot, but I do, and the many college students who were away from their families and spent much of their time hunkered down alone in their apartments, attending classes via Zoom. However, for many of those students, the Y, open in strict compliance with state mandates, was a place they could come to safely, 
see friends, and feel connected rather than isolated. We weren't just taking care of their physical health. We were taking care of their social emotional needs as well, so important in the lives of young adults. First time parents are embraced by our compassionate teachers and other parents in our early child care programs. And active older adults find connection, vibrancy, and improved health in classes offered by Jill, Jervon Scales, and other Y instructors. There are few places in any community that embrace people of every age in the way we see at our YMCA. To me, this has always been truly special. 158 years ago, I was not here. When our Y started, we served a much narrower group of people. This brings me to the other parallel I note between the Y and the giving tree. Like the tree, the Y has adapted, evolved, and identified new ways to support those we serve, and most importantly, expanded who we serve. Founded to support the needs of young single Christian men, today the Y serves people of all ages, all backgrounds, ethnicities, religions, <coughs> cultures, genders, sexual identities, and socioeconomic status, and supports people at every age and in every stage of life. We are truly a community crossroads. Opening our doors and our arms to everyone was a basic, necessary, and essential change. We have, however, been more innovative in other ways that we have adapted. We were an early leader in swim lessons and water safety. Our former facility was home for the USO during and after World War II. And for a time, we provided dormitory space for Champlain College during a period of that institution's growth, to name just a few evolutions of our why. A significant area of innovation and adaptation, and one that I am particularly proud of, is how we saw and met the needs created by a shift in family dynamics. As women entered the workforce in greater numbers, we started to offer childcare in many forms. Complementing Camp Abnaki, our boys' overnight camp, we opened our first co-ed summer day camp in the 1970s, our first preschool and kindergarten program in 1976, and our first off-site after-school program in 1985 after Champlain College conducted a study which documented the alarming number of latchkey kids living in Chittenden County. The support for families grew and is now an integral part of our work and our identity. To continue our service to the community, we know that from time to time we must evaluate our work and outline fresh strategic goals. At the start of the year, we rolled out a three-year strategic plan. The work of the Greater Burlington Y will include an increased focus on four strategic imperatives. One, member experience. We must develop and implement new and innovative approaches to deliver a first-in-class experience that focuses on programming, customer service, member connectedness, revenue generation, and sustainability. Two, youth development. We will offer new programs and services that continue to foster the social and emotional growth of infants to grade 12 youth with a special focus on experiences for teens. We are excited to increase our work with teens. Through a deepening relationship with Burlington High School, more and more teens come to our Y for physical education classes. The time is right to build upon this connection and build out additional programming and support for those teens. Three, build community. Our Y is created an inclusive space where all are welcome. Our intention is to build upon the fact that we are already a crossroads and to increase our role as a convener and powerful center of community. In just the first six months of this year, we are proud of the increased number of Y-hosted events, such as parenting and nutrition-focused speakers. We have co-created with partners such as the Red Cross to offer blood drives. And on a larger scale, with more than 25 community organizations in attendance and partners like the UVM Medical Center, we hosted Kids Fest in our parking lot in late April. Over 700 people attended Kids Fest had fun, and were immersed in activities focused on youth safety. Additionally, more and more local organizations use our space, from the Neighborhood Planning Committee to Green Mountain Adaptive Sports, the Community Justice Center, and others. With each event, we further cement our place as a thriving and growing center for community. And last but not least, staff engagement. We know that none of this good work happens without a strong workforce. So our strategic plan includes a focus on work that will make us an employer of choice 
through commitment of time and resources aimed at recruitment, training, and succession planning. A lot of work to do. These strategic initiatives are not the only change in the organization this year. After eight years of service to our Y, Kyle Dodson stepped away in January. I am so honored to serve this incredible organization in this interim role and thrilled as someone eyeing up retirement after my 42 years that with the support of YUSA, our boards engage in an exhaustive national search for a new leader for our Y. The intention is to have that person identified in place sometime in early fall, ideally in September. As is true for all organizations, there's always more to be done. However, I can stand here today and share with you that our new leader will join an organization ready to tackle challenges and will stand upon a strong foundation. We are ready to do the work necessary to remain a vibrant and essential fixture in this community. We cannot, however, rest on our past laurels or assume our good intentions and our good works alone will ensure our future. To remain strong, we recently engaged Y professionals from across the country and invited an operational assessment team to look under the hood. Their report will provide an objective perspective on several key aspects of our business and be based on their combined decades of experience and service to the Y movement. We are the stewards of the work of this Y, both our historic legacy and ensuring a strong future. Our strategic plan, the comprehensive search for a new CEO, and the operational assessment are just a few ways that we, as the current stewards, embrace this responsibility. In just a moment, I will turn the microphone over to three speakers who will share their stories. I think you'll see why we identified the theme of this annual meeting as the power of community. Before we hear from our first speaker, please allow me to share some of my appreciations. I am so thankful for the support and hard work of Katie and our entire board of directors. As volunteers, they give a great deal by way of support, time, judgment, and so much more. I am as excited as I've ever been in some time about the strength, commitment, and the direction of the Y Board. I appreciate our members, program families, donors, and community supporters. You're the reason we do this work, and often the reason we can get it done. And last, but very far from least, <sighs> I want to share just how much I value my Y colleagues. The heart of the Y is a staff that delivers on our mission to strengthen community. Our staff, many in this room today, show your hands, please be recognized. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> are who, I'm sorry, our staff, many in this room today, and many who are working as I speak, are deeply passionate about helping others. They bring heart dedication, skill, tireless energy, and more to our shared work. It is because I've had the opportunity to work with such caring and compassionate individuals that I have made the work of the Y my life's work. So thank you. You ready, Sydney? With that, I will turn the floor over to our guest speakers. First will be Y member, Sydney Ely, we will next hear from Bashir Abdallah, and we will conclude with remarks from Dr. Andrea Green. Please help me in welcoming Sydney. Thank you. ducking I see you <laughs> is this on yes can you yes. hear me okay so I was very nervous coming and as soon as I walked through the door the person that for me personally has meant the most to me German was there and he said you can do this I got your back and he gave me what my reward which I work for twice a week with him he gave me a fist bump. <laughs> That's big. It's very big. So I, I feel centered. 
All right. I wish I had one of those those things that you've got. Yeah, like that. <laughs> I don't have one. This is my yeah. first time speaking in public, so next time, there won't be a next time. So. <laughs> so, I've been asked to speak to share my thoughts about the why, and my thoughts range from things that I appreciate and enjoy and my concerns. Family, friends, and health are the three most important things in all of our lives. The Y is positioned to meet these three essential needs. Therefore, all of its programs can be viewed on how successfully it fulfills those needs. For me, a trainer provides the opportunity to improve my health and to develop friendships. A great trainer provides motivation for me to improve. The Y is a unique position to provide a sense of community for all of its members. My age group in particular is looking for several things in coming to the Y, getting into shape, improving our health, and making new friends. The classes offered by Jill, Gervon, Susan, and Brian, and others offer excellent opportunities to accomplish these goals. The Y needs to focus around supporting its trainers and helping them do their job. There are two kinds of health, physical and emotional health. Trainers help us physically. A gathering place helps us emotionally. There are very brief opportunities to meet and talk with people before and after class. A coffee shop would allow these conversations to be deeper and more meaningful. I'm seeing everybody going <laughs> like little bobby heads over there. Mm -hmm. Creating community could be enhanced if we had a place to know each other better. I'm an introvert, just in case you hadn't noticed that. <laughs> And, I, and I'm looking at the extroverts, they're going <laughs> They don't need the coffee shop, we do, we do. <laughs> Creating coffee shops would enhance if we had a place to know each other better. And a coffee shop would contribute to our emotional health as it provides a forum for friendships to develop. Yes, we do have conversations while standing right out there in the hallway, and it'd be just lovely to sit down and have a deeper conversation over coffee. What brings me to the why are excellent and engaging trainers that work with seniors like me. I don't have information on how trainers are compensated here, but my sense is that they are underpaid compared to other gyms. I represent members whose youthful exuberance is in the distant past. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> we are different from the college students that mostly just use the gym equipment. Have you been out and seen them jump from here to you know, the top of the rafters and back and then they do a little spin up there and then they come down and they, oh yeah, oh yeah. Although most are not personally knowledgeable, that's the young people, on how to increase muscle mass correctly, they are young and resilient and they have time to figure it out. Whenever I'm working with Gervon, he says, this is a gym thing. And they're going, bah, 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 bah. this is what you're doing, bah, down. Bah. And I'm going, oh, you're killing me here. You're killing me. <laughs> what attracts senior members like me to the Y are the excellent and engaging trainers. Seniors are looking for trainers, as seniors like me, mm -mm, that they can trust with their health. Career trainers are knowledgeable in how the body's muscles interact to keep us healthy through this stage in our lives. And this is why we are here. Having a trainer that provides all of these attributes requires a sustainable income to support them. A really good trainer brings more people to the why. We aren't as attracted to the less visible administrative staff, as great a job as they do, but the trainers are our point of contact as members. Better paid trainers are attracted to gyms that compensate them for their skills and their knowledge. 
they experience, uh, their ex expertise attracts more people to join the Y, which improves the training experience for all of us. I'm having a great training experience here, and I want to make sure that it continues. I mean, training here five days a week is the highlight of my entire day. Um, I want my trainers to be compensated fairly so that they can dedicate themselves to a sustainable training career. To support career trainers, the membership rate should be, could become a two-tier payment system. For those that request it, the membership rate could remain as it is. For a significant portion of the members, the rate could increase, perhaps by 20%. This is a stunning building. We are all so grateful for its existence. It will continue to require maintenance over the years to remain magnificent. The cost of living continues to rise in our beautiful town. And for those of us who can, let us help in raising the rates. Thank you very much. Good morning. <clears throat> Sorry, didn't want to touch the mic too much and then <laughs> hurt your ears. Uh, my name is Bashir Abdallah. I am a parent uh, of uh, a child at the uh, Y Child Care Center. Um, and, you know, I had, the ch I had the pleasure of speaking with the board about a month ago, and they asked me to come and speak at the annual meeting. I thought a little bit about what to say, maybe a bit different than what I'd shared, but only within five minutes, so I'll be relatively quick. Uh, I and my family are refugees, and so being a refugee and having to move quite a bit as a child impacts your ability to have a sense of community, because you're on the move and you don't really get to stay in one place and you don't get to have the type of bonds that, that you know we've heard here today, but that many of us see in this community. And I think in my teenage years, I started to appreciate what community looked like, but it never had a direct impact on me myself until my wife and I moved here to Burlington seven years ago. Um, our daughter, Yara, is four. She just turned four and, and is in the dino class at the YMCA. Uh, my wife is a neuropsychologist at UVM. And when we, when we moved here and we made the decision to uh, uh, apply to the Y, I think one of the really important things for us was this incredible facility and, um, and you know, a program that we thought would help our daughter learn a great deal, but what we, the byproduct of being there was something completely different. Um, we had Yara in June of 2020, so it's in the midst of COVID, uh, and we were scared, like many parents were, and we were uncertain and unsure about whether to send her to childcare, whether to keep her at home, like so many parents were struggling with. I, I want to, you know, I want to stress this because this is really, really important. The comfort that the Y, the childcare program that Danielle and Tammy and so many other staff members offered us in feeling confident that our child, that, that they were doing every measure possible to keep our children safe was incredible. Um, and for early parents who were unsure about dropping their kids off in, in a unfamiliar place at a time where we all didn't really know what was happening in the world, it, it meant a great deal to, to feel that comfort, to feel that sense of security. Um, and we were learning a great deal from them as well. I and mean, I can't tell you the countless conversations that, and advice that Tammy offered both Emily and I as young parents, uh, well, not the young, we're technically geriatrics <laughs> for parents, but, um, but as new parents um, was, was incredibly powerful and, and we were so grateful to you and, and to, to Jess and Brooke and the, and the team. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's incredible that the staff, I think, have been such a pillar of stability and 
love and support for us as parents. And I know I speak on behalf of so many other parents who feel the same way. Um, and whether it's walking into a vestibule and dropping our little baby off, or now being able to see other kids engage with one another in, in the Y, um, in, the, in the settings, and seeing the smiling, positive faces of the staff every day, good days, bad days, there's always this incredible energy that they bring for the kids, uh, and, they, and they do so consistently. And I know we mentioned the facilities. The facilities obviously are great. There's splash pad and pool and gym in the middle of winter, and those things matter um, because it provides accessibility in times where um, for, for kids trying to grow up and have fun and being with their other friends, it, it, may, it means a, a really great deal. Uh, and there have been challenges. Um, I think that you know, the, the child care program have had their fair share of challenges. But I think what's more important is how they've responded to those challenges with transparency. Um, I think, Danielle, you've done an incredible job of, of not only being transparent, but leveraging the parents and leveraging the community to be able to, to weigh in and, and support as best we could. Um, so, you know, I, just, just incredible experience for my wife and I. And I'll leave just on a couple of quick notes. The thing that I didn't anticipate, what I wasn't expecting, is how much the Y has shaped our daughter's experience. I mean, she comes home every day, and I have to become Yara, and she's my teacher. <laughs> if that doesn't tell you what type of experience she's having at the Y, she wants to play teacher, she wants me to be her student, and it's been three years running. I'm ready for a change, but it is, <laughs> it, it is, the, type of, it is the type of thing that, you know, if, if you know, that I think tells you so much about the staff and how impressionable they are on, on kids. And I think the other thing is that we've had this incredible ability to meet friends. Like, I don't, I don't think we were, we, you know, we moved here seven years ago, and I think for three plus years before we had Yara, we didn't really have a strong friend network except for our folks in our neighborhood. And I can't tell you how many birthday parties we've gone to and how many incredible dinners we've had and as all of the result of meeting other parents and other kids at, at, at the child care program. So thank you so much for having me and I, I hope it, it's a re, you know, reflection of, of how much uh, you know, the why means to us, uh, to, my, to my family personally and to, to the community. Thank you. everyone can hear me yeah perfect um, so I'm dr. Andrea Green thank you very much for the opportunity I'm really honored to get to be here um, to share a little bit about my experience with the Y just um, so you know I work for the University of Vermont Medical Center actually for the Children's Hospital I'm a general pediatrician um, and for the past 20 years or so I have um, worked in new American populations so I'm the director of the Pediatric New American Program at UVM Children's Hospital and um, also for Pediatric Global Health. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story of how I came to uh, be so fond of the YMCA. Um, and how, uh, with a partnership with the Y, we've really been able to make changes that I could not have done alone from my office. Um, I love working in my office. I love getting to see families one-on-one, -on -one, but it's really with the power of community and partnership that we can make really significant changes in children's well-being. Um, so how does the story start? So around 2011, a new pediatric resident joined our program. His name was Dr. John Cole, and he came to me within the first few weeks of being there and said, I want to do an advocacy project. I um, have an idea that's really important to me, and I um, want to work on water safety. So um, swimming had always been a really big part of his life. In fact, he had learned to swim at the Y at age three, and he had maintained um, a love of swimming and water. He had become um, a competitive swimmer. He was a lifeguard. He taught people how to swim, and this was a really important part of his life. And he felt that he'd learned a lot of lessons from being a swimmer. It had taught him to be dedicated. It had taught him to have perseverance. It had taught him to be part of a team. Um, it taught him that he um, could deal with disappointment. And um, it really helped him to understand the importance of exercise and safety promotion. 
So um, after being a competitive swimmer in high school, he actually became a competitive swimmer in college. He went to Colby College. And he, um, although he loved water, had a great respect for the dangers of water as well. And when he was a student at Colby College, um, a classmate of his, um, who was from Bhutan originally, drowned. So this classmate had never had the opportunity to learn how to swim, and he was in a canoe in Maine, and that canoe overturned in a storm, and he could not swim the 75 yards to the shore, and so he drowned. There are universities that do have a, actually a swimming requirement that's required in order to graduate, so both Cornell and Dartmouth have that, but Colby College did not have that at the time. So when John um, came, he knew that drowning was a major cause of death in children, um, I have to tell you all, it's been replaced by gun violence now. That is the number one cause of, number one killer of children in this country. Um, one in four children do still die in drowning deaths, and for every child that drowns, five more are seen in the emergency department for near drowning. So it's a major issue, um, and there are racial differences in who drowns. So black and American Indian and Alaskan Native children have higher rates of drowning, as do boys. Boys are three times, three out of four drownings are, are boys. Um, so formal swimming lessons have been shown to really make a difference. And in fact, swimming lessons for children age one to four um, reduce the risk of drowning by 88%. So it's really, really impactful. We live in a water state. We have lots and lots of bodies of water and people wanting, especially in this heat wave, to go into water. And so John said, I want to do something about this. And he got a catch grant, which is uh, money that can be awarded to residents to do a project. Um, from the American Academy of Pediatrics, and he partnered with the Y to create something called Camp Splash. And some of these pictures um, are Camp Splash, including the one with Jess over here. Um, and so uh, Camp Splash started that year. Um, we got grants to continue it, um, and it has continued as a partnership between um, the Medical Center and the Y, and been a really, really important part of our community. So um, we signed kids up at the New American Safety Festival. So the New American Safety Festival um, started because we knew that a lot of families that moved here didn't understand sort of a lot of the rules. And it really started because I had a parent who had gotten a huge fine for not having a child in a car seat. Um, and so not only did they now have to pay the fine, they had to buy a car seat. And so we started it um, really to try to help families get car seats. 97% of families had misuse of car seats when we did our first um, car seat uh, safety festival. And we were able to reduce that to 70%, which is actually the rate in the state. So we still have a lot of work to do there because um, as a state overall, we still have a lot of problems with car seats, but it's getting better. So um, at that event, we would teach people um, about swim safety a little bit, but that was mainly going to be through signing people up for Camp Splash. So Jess would come and she would sign people up at that event. And we talk with all kinds of other community partners who would come to do sleep safety, bike safety, getting up a bus safety, pedestrian safety, fire safety, all kinds of things. So lots and lots of community partners came. The location of it changed a lot. Um, and we had uh, food and we had movement and um, it was something where we initially called it the day, but the children loved it and they called it the party. When was the party going to happen? So we made it a festival. Um, and we have continued to do that except during COVID. And for the past two years, we have been partnering very intentionally with the Y. So it's actually been held at the Y. And originally why we did it separately is because we needed to have interpreters who were there so that they could teach people about all the messaging. And so what we did in partnering with the Y is we moved all the elements of the New American Safety Festival to the Y to create a really, really inclusive event that had all the community partners, all the safety messaging, included interpreters so everybody could get access to that safety messaging. And as you heard, 700 kids from all of Chittenden County, all different ages, all different abilities, all different backgrounds, come together for a really, really fun event. And it makes me really, really smile to see how we are really one community and there's no longer any need to create a separate event to make sure that we are allowing people access to the information that they needed. I want to mention one other thing that's come out of our partnership, and I want to call out Marianne Maline. Will you stand up for one second? So, everyone. so this is Marianne. So Marianne works with me, um, but she's also been an amazing advocate for ensuring that parents can swim. So yesterday, for example, I saw some kids. I was signing them up for Camp Splash, and um, I was asking them some safety measures, like, 
who should be watching you when you swim? And they said, my parents. And so then I said, do they know how to swim? No. Do your big cousins know how to swim? No. The adults in your family don't know how to swim. So actually, they're not who we want watching you when you swim because they don't know how to help you if you get into trouble. We need to have a lifeguard who can help you know how to swim. And I heard from parents time and time again, we would like to know how to swim. We don't know how to swim. It's great that you're helping kids learn to swim, but we don't know how to swim. So Mary Ann has worked with Jess um, and uh, created a mother's swim group that is culturally appropriate. It happens after hours and um, is uh, been really, really wonderful in gathering women together so that they can learn how to swim. All this to say that the work of supporting families and working on drowning prevention um, and creating inclusive spaces has really happened and will continue to happen because of a partnership with the Y. I hope that it goes on 150 plus years, but it has been 13 years so far and I'm really grateful and I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Marsha. I'm usually the one that cries at events, so I was glad that Marsha was the one that got choked up about the staff. I share the sentiment. I was just, it, it got me. Thank you, Marsha and Sydney and Bashir and Dr. Green. Um, I really appreciate that you spoke from your heart in your remarks today. Thank you very much. It makes a great deal of difference. And what I took from your comments is that I heard the things you get at the Y. You can get a motivating fist bump. You can get smiles and security for kids and for yourself. I heard that you can meet friends. And I heard that you can gain life skills for safety and well-being. And that through all of that, I learned that you also get partners in what you're needing and seeking for yourself. So thank you for sharing your sentiments. Um, at each board meeting, we intentionally start our meetings with a mission minute. It's where we met Bashir, he came to our board meeting. It helps us ground our thoughts and decisions in the real impact and the outcomes that we're hoping to have in our community. So to hear so many stories of impact and mission this morning truly is a gift. And I know that I leave today further invested in our work of the why, having heard from the four of you. Thank you very much. With that, I will again say thank you for joining us today. I hope that you, as attending the annual meeting, will leave as motivated and connected to our very special why as I am, and to help keep with the positive spirit of this morning's meeting, and with the help of some young artists in our Y Early Child Care Program, we have some prepared cards that will be handed out as you leave, and the cards offer a suggestion as how you may perform an act of kindness for someone else today, helping to spread our Y joy to strengthen our communities. Thank you very much for being here, and we appreciate your engagement at the Y. Thank you. <laughs>